Peter chapter 1, but because some comments that Charles made during the announcements, I'm going to start there as well. And it says, and, you, and as you all know, Brad's out with a sinus, who knows what he's got, some kind of crud. Uh, so he wasn't able to talk, and that pretty much makes it difficult for him to preach this morning. But in First Peter or Second Peter chapter one, starting verse twelve, it says, "For this reason, uh, I will not be negligent to remind you always of these things." And Charles said his announcement that I was going to probably preach something you've heard before. <laughs> <laughs> so, not to disappoint, I'm going to talk about something you've heard before. So, I'm going to remind you. Uh, some things that you probably know already, but, uh, but as it says, for this reason, the reason being that Brad's not here this morning, uh, you'll get to uh, hear something that you've probably heard from me before, but I think it's something that's important. Something, actually, something's come up in our class over the past, uh, past few weeks, and then on Wednesday evening, we were reading uh, from... First Corinthians talked about temptation. There being like there not being a temptation that we cannot not common to man and not one that we can God provides a way out, we can overcome. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about temptation this morning and going to actually take you back now to the really the real verse we're going to start with in Genesis chapter three and the temptation of Eve by Satan in Genesis three. And so if you think about things that have happened recently in our, around the, the country, we've, we see random shootings and various things that happen. And, and when those things happen, people, news people, police departments, and forth, so forth, tell people, be, be vigilant, be looking around, be aware of your surroundings. You know, those kind of th statements come out. And... You know, the, it, we really should do that, and, and that's sort of the, the whole approach that the law enforcement takes. They, they look for things that are out of the ordinary. You know, that, does, that just doesn't look right. I might need to, you know, I might need to stop, or I might need to, to keep an eye on that particular situation. And so we, you, you see that, and they, they monitor various social media, people see things, people posted, you know, they may make somebody aware of that. And so they start monitoring a particular situations. And we don't hear a lot about those, but a lot of things are prevented because of that. People will say stuff or people will post something or somebody hears something that they pass on because they are being uh, vigilant about what they hear. and. You know, it's investigated, and something that somebody has planned may be, you know, may be stopped uh, because of that. And so, uh, you know, the idea of that, and what we're talking about this morning, I'm not giving you a lesson on law enforcement, but to sort of draw an analogy between Satan and his gold, and people who are out to do harm, sometimes what their goal is. And if you think about What's Satan's goal? Well, his the goal is to destroy mankind spiritually. That's that's his ultimate goal, and and he's after each one of us. And so, you know, we may not think that's the case, but you think about the creation of the world. Genesis chapter one, God creates the world. Genesis chapter two, God creates man and woman puts them in the garden of eden and then in genesis chapter 3 satan appears for the first time and and with his attack on these two people that god has just created now what's the time span there well we know the the you know the the idea of the creation was 7 days i mean god had the power to do that but the time span from you know how long did they lived there in the garden till Satan come in, you know, come appeared and and began his work. You know, that's a little bit more difficult to to tell, but it doesn't appear like it's a, a a long period of time. Just from what we read, I mean, the Bible records it in you know three like three sort of series of events. 
doesn't really give us a timetable for that. But anyway, I want to look at Genesis chapter 3 this morning and look at the things that Satan did, how he attempted to, or how he did, uh, tempt Eve and how he went about that. And then I think it would help us to think about these things and think about, you know, in our lives, you know, how, how these things, things that happen to us, how that things are put in front of us and how we re react to those is is important and, and knowing how Satan works and I think we see how Satan works here in this in this uh, group of verses uh, it helps us so in uh, Genesis chapter 3 and verse 1 uh, the first thing that Satan does to Eve is he tries to maximize I'm gonna say maximize the restriction of God Okay, so if you look at, at his first statement to Eve, indeed, has God said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Now think about that question. What, is, what does Satan say, and is he trying to set her up, you know, for his, his next attack? And I think the answer is yes. He's trying to get her to see what God said in a different light than what actually uh, God said. And so if you look then... In verses 2 and 3, we have what Eve said. And so if you look in Genesis chapter 3, verse 2 and 3, it says, And the woman said, well, first he says, As God indeed, you shall not eat every tree of the garden. And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Okay? Is that what God said? Well, wait, I don't know for sure. You, you think she quoted him directly, didn't you? Well, she didn't, as a matter of fact. If you go back to chapter 2 and verse 17, this is, what, this is what God said. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you, well, uh, let me back up. Uh, in verse 16, and the Lord commanded man, saying, Of every tree of the garden ye may freely eat, of the, of, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil ye shall not eat it, for the day you eat of it ye shall surely die. Now what's different about those two statements? Well, number one, Eve omitted the idea of freely. God said, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, and so when she quoted it, she says, uh, you can eat of every tree of the garden. Okay? Now, does she, does she restrict or does Satan get her to restrict more about what God said? What did God say about the tree of knowledge of good and evil? God said, don't eat it. Right? What did Eve say? Eve said, don't touch it. And don't eat it, right? So is she becoming more restrictive than what God said? And I think we can see that that she is, and that's she's playing into into Satan's, you know, his power and what he's trying to get her to do. He's trying to change her view of God, and so now he's he has her thinking that God is very restrictive rather than being generous. Does God do the same thing today? Does God try to get, or Satan do the same thing today? Does he try to get people to look at God as being restrictive rather than being generous to mankind? Sure he does. You know. And so you, you think about that situation, and, and I'm reminded, I don't know if you've ever watched Jay Leno when he was on The Tonight Show, but Jay Leno used to go out and do these man-on-the-street interviews. And you know they're all edited and so forth. But he would go out and ask people questions. He would show them pictures. You know, do you know who this is? You know, and they would. You know, they didn't recognize the president or the vice president or various people. But he he went out uh, with a did that one time and said, "Name one of the Ten Commandments." And he got all sorts of answers. You know, you, you know some of them were right. You know, you shouldn't kill or you shouldn't steal. Whatever, but this one lady answered, and she said her answer to this question was, "Thou shalt not do anything." 
But that tells you that was, that was her view of God. Her view of God was very restrictive. And that's exactly what the Satan was trying to get Eve to, to do. Change her mind about how she viewed God. Rather than God being generous and providing, you can freely eat of all these things in the garden. But she says, you know, you can't, you can't even touch it. And she left out to freely eat, so you know, she, she's being, he gets her to be more restrictive. And so then the second thing that Satan does is he tries to minimize the consequences of sin. And then really, he doesn't just minimize it, he, he denies the consequences of sin. He argues that what God has promised as a consequence will, won't occur. And she says, in, as we just read in chapter 3, uh, that, you know, when you do these things, you will die in chapter 3. Well, what did the serpent say in verse 4? Salem said to the woman, you will not die. You shall not surely die. So he just completely changes what's, what God has said and says something that's completely opposite. And so, you know, is Satan then, he's the first one to preach this what saved off a saved doctrine? Sort of sounds like it, right? Oh, you're not going to die. You're okay. Don't worry about it. You know, you're, you're good with God and, and you're, you're good forever, the way, he, the way he looked at it. And so he, he took what, you know, he took what Eve thought and just completely turned it around and made it a very negative reaction to what God said. You're not going to die. He says something completely different. And so, you know, we, does the same thing happen today? Does Satan do the same thing today? And you think about people who are involved in drugs and drinking and fornication and idolatry, various other things, you know, what does Satan say? It ain't going to kill you, Right? Well, tell the, the drug addict that's just died from an overdose that, you know, they thought it made them feel good. And that we hear that now almost daily if you really hear a lot about what's going on uh, in our world. And, and that happens to a lot of people. And you think about a drunk driver who's killed somebody, you know, in a car accident, you know. They didn't think that was going to happen. But it did, and it does. And so the third thing in Genesis chapter 5, he, he relabels the action here in, in this verse. He tries to persuade Eve that eating of the, of the forbidden tree is not really sin, but it's something better. And how does he accomplish that? Well, he tells her that she will not be doing evil, but rather she will know good and evil. And he spins that whole act of disobedience, of eating the forbidden fruit, into something that's good as far as she can see. It's innocent. It's harmless. And so you look at uh, the rest of, of verse 4, For God knows that the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open. You will be like God, knowing good and evil. So he, he relabels then, you know, the, what God has told her. Don't eat of this tree. The day you eat of it, you'll die. And he's saying, no, no, no. That's not the case. The day you eat of that, you're going to be like God. And you're going to know a lot of things you don't know now. And so he's, he's, you know, he's feeding this idea then that, you know, this is good what, what, if you would do this. And so he promises, he promises another outcome. You know, it's not going to be death, but you're going to see things that you've never seen. You're going to know what God knows. And so today we see the same thing. You know, things that are, that are sin is presented as a positive benefit. It's freedom. It's being your real self. You know, it's a relief from, you know, the pressures of life. It's, a, it's harmless pleasure. All these things that we see around us, that's what Satan wants people to think about those things. 
You don't want to think of those as, as sin or those things that would lead to death. I mean, that's, that's way opposite of his, of his uh, the way he sees things or the way he wants things to be. Fourth, he accentuates the desirability of this. You know, suddenly, now this fruit that Eve sees and Adam sees is looked at a little different. You know, she had looked at that fruit from God eyes, God's eyes. She would have seen something that she should stay away from, right? The day you eat of that, you will die. And she should have been staying away from that. But now... He says, it's not going to make you, it's not going to kill you. You're not going to die. Matter of fact, you're going to be better. You're going to know more and you're going to be like God. And so he, he, he sort of prides that desire, you know, in her mind for that. And so, you know, what, what's the result of that? So let's look at verse, at chapter, I mean, verse 6. So when the woman saw that the tree was good, what does she see? She saw that the tree was good for food. It was pleasant to the eyes. And the tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate it. Did he accomplish what he wanted her to do? What he wanted to do? Sure, he did. And we see how he went about doing that. And what did she see? You know, God said no. Don't eat of it. But when she looked at it now, after this conversation with Satan, she sees something that looks good, and it's, you know, I'm sure it tastes good. You know, that was the next thing. It usually, you know, if somebody puts something in front of us that looks good, our first mind is it probably tastes good, right? And then, not only if you eat it, you're going to be wise so that she she had all of those things as well and so satan has has packaged this in such a way that it's now it's desirable it's not forbidden in in the way she uh, sees that and satan does the same thing today you know for wrap up something in a nice package so it looks good you know what do we get excited when we have a when we get a package and it's wrapped up and it has a bow on top and it has our name on it you know especially when we were children you know there's something good in there right if it's got a this nice pretty paper on it and it says happy birthday or merry christmas and it's got a big bow on top of it we look at it we go wow there's I want, to, I want to open that and get in there because there's something good in there, right? And so that's exactly what Satan did to her. He packaged this whole thing up. So when she looked at it, you know, it looks good. I bet it tastes good. I can't wait to, to try it. And so that was, his, that was sort of his ploy to get her to partake of the fruit. Same ploy he uses today to get people to do things they shouldn't be doing. And so finally, he assumes the place of God. He's put himself now in, I'm telling you things that are great for you. You don't have to listen to what God says. And you think about God, God has been truthful to her from the very beginning, her and Adam. You know, you can eat of all these things. You eat of that, you're gonna die. And he's been generous. You can freely eat of all these other things. I mean, that was God. But at the end, what's Satan done to Eve? He's persuaded her that God is just the opposite. He's untruthful. He's a li- he lied to you. You know, he said you're going to die, and I'm telling you, you won't die. God told you a lie, and she believed that. He's unloving. He's very restrictive. You see all of those things happen in this story that he, that he not really a story, this event that, that happens. And so he steps in God's place and he convinces Eve that Satan is the truthful one. He's the generous one. 
look what I'm going to do for you. You're not going to die. You're going to be wise. You're going to know all these things. I'm, this is what I'm able to, able to give you. And so, you know, the real evil of sin is not this exchange of wrong for right or the substitute, but it's this assassination on God and on God's character. You know, when people give in to, to these things and give in to sin, they have denied, they are denying God and God's character that he provides and he's generous and he's truthful. And, they, and people are saying when they give in to these things, God, I don't believe you. I believe Satan because he packaged it up and he made it look a whole lot better than maybe what it really first appeared. And so when we accept Satan's presentation, then we're vulnerable to these temptations. And he said, they're, they're going to happen. We're going to be tempted. But when we accept what Satan says about it, hey, it's, it's going to feel good. It's going to be good. It's going to do good things for me. It's going to make me popular. It's gonna, I'm going to feel relaxed. I don't feel restricted by I don't have a lot of thou shalt nots that I've got to obey. Then when we give in to that, then we've, we've denied the truthfulness of God and we've divide, denied the things that God is really able to do for us. But how do we do that? How do we overcome then those temptations? Well, we, we overcome those by knowing from what we've talked about this morning. We know how Satan's operating. And if we know how Satan's operating, then we can focus upon God. And we focus upon his goodness and we focus upon his faithfulness and on his grace that he provides for us and guidance that he provides for us. And so when you think about these things, you know, today, tomorrow, anytime this week, we're probably going to face something, uh, some temptation or something is going to be put in for us. Why? What, what did it say? You know, all of us are vulnerable to these things. All of us are targets uh, for Satan. If you look in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8, what did Peter say there? Be sober. What does he mean there? Serious. This is serious business. Be sober. Be vigilant. What did we talk about at the very beginning? About being vigilant, watchful. Watch out for what's going on. Why? He says, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. That's, that's, that's Satan's goal. And is, you know, getting many people as he can to be pulled away from God. Being turned away from God. Getting people to view God in a different way than what his really true nature is. And so those are some, you know, some, as we face temptation, those are some things to think about. And, and I think if we do, you'll see, you know, you'll see how those things, how those things happen. You know, things will look good. You know, things will, will play into our, our human idea of being successful or our pride that we have. You know, if you can do this and this, you know, you can get this promotion or you can do these things. And so I think Satan does try to, does try to pull us away from God. And we have to be aware of that. And we have to watch for that as we live each and every day. So things to think about this morning, uh, as I said, you've heard them before, right? But you've heard them again. And hopefully it's help us as we listen to them again to, uh, to do better in our lives and strive to do better each and every day. As we, every time we meet, we provide an opportunity for someone who needs to respond to the gospel, opportunity to do that, to obey the first principles of the gospel by believing, repenting, confessing, and being baptized to become a follower of Christ and become a child of him and, and have his help as you strive to walk uh, your life here on this earth. And, you know, sometimes temptations overtake us. 
and we have to go back and we have to repent of those things. We have to change our mind about how we view things sometimes. You know, we don't look at those things. We look at those things the way God wants us to look at them. And so we, we take action uh, based on that. You know, we repent of things that we've done the wrong and we, we come back and we start over and we try to view those the right way. If we can help you anyway this morning, we're certainly willing to do that as we stand and sing. Brother.